What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome back to the Beastly Gamer channel. Today we're going to talk about the PlayStation Vita, a handheld that had a really, really bright future that died way too early. Well, maybe not too early. It just a lot of things went into play that made the Vita die. And uh, I feel like Sony is a part of the problem. I feel that third parties or lack thereof are a big part of the problem. When they announced the PlayStation Vita, I was extremely excited as a PSP fan. I thought that this is the next generation of the PSP. It's going to have AAA titles. Uh, it's going to be able to run console quality games. And unfortunately, that stuff just didn't come to fruition. They didn't see third party developers. Uh, a lot of uh, the, the AAA games that this console could have had was made by, you know, really, really lackluster developers like Black Ops Declassified and Resistance and even ports that came to the Vita from PS3 and Xbox 360 didn't hold up very well and ultimately it became more of an indie station towards the end of its life cycle and i hate to see it go it's one of those situations you know where you are on the vita island by yourself every now and then you get a decent game but for the most part the vita is going to sleep it's going into an everlasting slumber but as someone who owned the psp and knows the power of the psp especially when it's opened uh i was really excited about the possibilities of a homebrew on my PS Vita, you know, the possibility of emulators, the possibility of cracked games and homebrewed applications. It took a very, very long time for this to happen, guys. I mean, a long time. I remember years ago, just online searching to see if anyone had cracked this thing. And finally, uh, a very talented group of developers has cracked the PlayStation Vita in a way that makes it extremely accessible to anybody who owns one. You don't have to know much about the scene of, uh, you know, hacking and exploits. All you have to do is know how to go to a website. And once you do that, you can immediately crack your PlayStation Vita in about five minutes. And I'll drop a link in the description. PS Vita Jailbreak finally lets you run emulators and homebrew software. After years of lockdown, enterprising developers release simple browser-based hack. If you see someone still playing on a PSP, chances are it's because it's been hacked to hell. Sony's trusty handheld might not have been the sales phenomenon that the company had hoped for, but despite the company's best efforts, the PSP became the handheld to own if you were into homebrew software and retro gaming. This was due to the ease of with which it was hacked, the quality of hardware, and the steady stream of unofficial software and emulators. There was hope that the follow-up to the PSP, the PlayStation Vita, would be similarly hacked with the improved hardware and additional analog stick allowing for the emulation of more sophisticated consoles. Unfortunately, the Vita has been a much tougher nut to crack. Despite some early efforts, the best anyone had come up with was an exploit that only worked on an older version of the Vita software, and that required it to be tethered to a PC, hardly ideal for a portable console. Finally though, some clever folks at the hacking collective team Molecule had come up with a solution that fully unlocks the PS Vita hardware for homebrew developers. Dubbed Hinkaku, the jailbreak exploit not only works on the latest 3.60 Vita firmware, but also requires very little user intervention to execute. All you have to do is head over to the official Hinkaku website on the Vita, tap the install button you see, and then sit back and let the hack work its magic. The one drawback is that the jailbreak isn't permanent, so if the Vita is fully powered off, it needs to be reinstalled, which only takes a second. Once installed, the exploit allows users to access the Vita's file system via FTP and transfer across homebrew packages. Those games and apps are then displayed on the home screen ready for use. Software is relatively scarce at the moment given how new the exploit is, although a Vita version of Doom and a handful of emulators are available for the Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Neo Geo Pocket, Mega Drive, Sega Genesis, and Super Nintendo. Users can also install VHBL, a PSP-based homebrew menu that features more fully developed emulators. Interestingly, the exploit also works on the PlayStation TV. Aside from enabling homebrew software, the exploit also brings back the ability to play any Vita game on the system, not just those whitelisted by Sony, which is awesome. I have a Vita TV and I'm going to do that. One thing the exploit doesn't do is let users play pirated software. All the DRM features of the Vita remain intact, while it's doubtful that Sony will let the exploit slide even without the ability to play pirated software, at least those that do decide to use it can do so with a clean conscience. Team Molecule recommends that players using the exploit avoid updating from firmware 3.60 until it can confirm that the hack still works. Given the dearth of content and features on the Vita of late, it's not too big a sacrifice to make. There's really no good games coming to the Vita anymore. There's really no reason to hold off from trying this, in my opinion. All you're going to be able to do in the meantime is add, uh, you know, homebrewed emulators 
play older games. You know, you can, I put a Super Nintendo in mine, a Game Boy Advance, a Sega Genesis, and they all work fine. Uh, and uh, it pops right up on the screen. It's really, really awesome. This exploit is extremely easy. I've never seen one this easy before. As someone who knows what it's like to go through hell to exploit, uh, you know, a system, I've done it with the PSP. It took forever. Um, doing it on the PS3 was kind of tedious work, but here all you do is take your Vita, go to the Himkaku website, uh, and click on the install button and wait. That's it. Wait for about another minute or two and your Vita is fully hacked. I think it's an awesome thing. I think the Vita is dying and this could possibly give it some new legs and some new life. I'd like to see some of the new emulators that are coming out. I'd like to see some of the new homebrewed games. You know, there's some developers out there that make their own games and they put it on, you know, homebrew applications. And it's just something totally different than what you see in the PlayStation Store. So I'm looking forward to seeing what happens here. I want to see Sony's reaction to this because up until now, the Vita has been pretty much impervious to attack or impervious to hacks. And now that the Vita is dying down, I guess they're taking their focus off of it. I want to see how aggressive they are in trying to stop this, this website and stop this hack from happening. But I'm happy it did. My Vita is officially hacked and it's very, very easy to do. You guys let me know in the comments if you own a Vita, would you be willing to try this, this exploit to basically open up the Vita files and be able to FTP files over to it, install them and have Super Nintendos and Genesis and 64s and all this stuff on your Vita right there ready for you to play it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give a thumbs up, show support for the channel. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and tell all your friends about the channel. I'm the Beastly Gamer. And I'll see you guys next time.